Well, these guys have asked me to talk a little bit about why I joined scouting, what advancement meant to me, talk about my troop, my scoutmaster, and program for me. Now, I started scouting. I was not your typical Boy Scout. I started scouting at 13. My brother was a Cub Scout. He was my older brother. Hated it. Glue and popsicle sticks together and things like that. And so he quit after about two months. And of course, if my older brother quit, I wasn't going to do it. All right, so it was just one of those things I was never going to do. We had a guy at the local J.C. Penney. His name was Chris Elsey. He was a manager in the men's department. And you know, back in those days, you got all your scout supplies at the J.C. Penney or the local store. So every time we would go into J.C. Penney with dad or mom, and it wasn't just me, every kid in the community, he would pull you aside and say, hey, you need to be a Boy Scout. Come on over here and let me show you all this stuff. And I kept saying, look, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. You know, it got to the point where we would not go to J.C. Penney because we had the Chris Elsie gauntlet to run, <laughs> right? You had to get past Chris because he was so adamant about Boy Scouts. And even though I didn't join because of Chris, that always stayed in my head that that volunteer cared so much that he continued to come and talk about scouting to everybody he could talk to about. So fast forward now, I'm 13 years old. You probably can't tell, but I used to be a big kid back in the day. And all the kids in my neighborhood were in one scout troop. It was Troop 501 in Sanford. I'll tell you more about the Scoutmaster in a few minutes. But they came one Saturday to my house and said, you've got to join Boy Scouts. And I said, I don't want to join the Boy Scouts. This is crazy. I mean, I was playing football. I was playing baseball, doing all the sports things. The last thing I wanted to do was, was join Boy Scouts because I had memories of my brother and the Cub Scout experience. Well, they said, we only need you for a month. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, what's going on? They said, we got this campery coming up. In last district campery, this troop from across town raided us and beat us up. And we're going to get them back. <laughs> so they were recruiting all the big kids in the neighborhood, and we were supposed to then go and pay that troop back. And I said, now you're talking about something that I might enjoy. <laughs> so I joined Boy Scouts. And I show up at the first troop meeting, and our scoutmaster was a guy named Clarence Fogg. Just an extraordinary guy. I'll tell you more about him later. He heard about this recruiting mission that they were on, and he calls me over, and he says, I am really excited that you've joined scouting and you've joined our troop. You're going to be a great addition. I said, thanks. I'm really looking forward to it, too. Um, he said, everybody in this troop has a job. No matter how long you've been in scouting, you still have a job. I said, okay, what's my job? He said, stop the fight at the campery. Don't let it happen. That's your job. And in fact, I did. And I was hooked. That was it. I mean, that guy just hooked me in. Uh, it, it, was just, it was an amazing tool that he used to say, this is your job. If you want to be in this unit, you stop that fight. Because it simply can't happen. And either you're going to stop it or I'm going to stop it. It's a lot better if you do. So I did stop the fight and stayed in. Now it's been almost 40 years. I mean, it was a phenomenal journey. But it all started with that scout leader and with our program. Let me tell you about the scoutmaster. Hated the council. Hated the council. Hated national. Hated commissioners. The, I was senior patrol leader eventually, and every time the commissioner would come, he would call me over and he'd say, all right, the council spy is here, so let's be good. So, I mean, I, I grew up in that mentality. The DE would come visit us. This was a great DE. I liked him so much. I asked him to present my eagle, which he did. But every time this poor DE would come to our troop, the scoutmaster, as soon as he would leave, would look, he'd shake his head, he'd say, nobody's got to pay me to be a Boy Scout. I mean, it was just one of those guys who was just against all council and district authority. And yet, we camped every month. We did every Order of the Arrow weekend. We did summer camp every year, no matter what. Sometimes we did it twice, two weeks in a year, if enough of us wanted to go. And it wasn't for rank. And that's what was so interesting about him, because, you know, once I got hooked, after stopping the fight, I said, well, Mr. Fogg, I want to be an Eagle Scout. And I'm 13. I only got till 18. So I want to map this thing out, and I want to become an Eagle Scout. I, I, want, to, I want to earn my Eagle. And he said, I don't care if you're an Eagle Scout. <laughs> he said, you don't need to be an Eagle Scout. 
that's not important to me. I want you to be a man. That's what's important to me. In my troop, in the five years that I was there, from 13 to 18, we had two Eagle Scouts, his son and me. It was never an advancement issue for us. But I tell you what, we won every campery. We used to, just for fun, true story, we would have tent pitching competitions at the campery. You know, you got burn the string, you got tent pitching. We were so good that when the tent pitching competition would begin, we would blindfold ourselves <laughs> and we still beat the other troops. I mean, that is how good we were on our scouting skills because this guy absolutely believed that the mission of the Boy Scouts of America was to create teamwork and understanding and character building. We had kids from all across our community. Every kid that needed a unit came here. My scoutmaster was a refrigerator repair guy. That's what he did. Every single kid that came to us, particularly from the inner city, he provided uniforms, paid for their trips, paid for their meals. But I'll tell you, he never got involved in the troop. It was a phenomenal thing. We were so boy run. His theory was very simple. I'm here to make sure you kids don't kill yourselves. And other than that, you're on your own. So when I was, in fact, I'll never forget, I was, uh, I was in charge of like my fourth or fifth month, which by now I'd gone camping six times. I was supposed to buy the food for my patrol. Now, I figured, and I had a budget, and I went to the grocery store, and I was just running out of money because when I did the math, I thought, okay, a pound of hamburger each for dinner. A pound of, I was thinking, this is what we eat, right? I, I had no idea. So we got to the campsite and the meat spoiled and we were very hungry for two days. And he did not interject, he didn't say a word. He just said, I hope you guys learned. And after that, every single thing we did was as a team, was as a unit, and was as a group that was focused just on learning to work together and to communicate with each other. And that was his key about blindfolding us on the tent pitching. It wasn't to show that we were better scouts it was a show that we could communicate as scouts and we could listen to each other and we could hear each other's needs and we knew what we needed to do and we would respond under pressure. That's what he cared about. So again, two Eagle Scouts in five years. That's all we had. His son, who was a life scout when I got in, and me, and he beat me by a month finishing because that was never our issue. But it was for me. It was for me because I wanted to become an Eagle Scout. I did, and, and that was, the reason why was, was, was very important to me. I had come into the unit just to pick a fight. I fell in love with it, and I said, I wanna earn my eagle. And he said, see, that's where you're wrong. He said, you never earn your eagle. You can't earn your eagle. You can become an eagle. You can get all those skills together and change yourself in such a way to become an eagle scout but you can't earn your eagle. You can't buy it, you can't earn it, and once you got it, you can't lose it. So I wanted to become an Eagle Scout, and I did. But what was interesting for me on the advancement lessons, you know, we talk about what do you learn in advancement, and what's so important about advancement, and I'll tell you what it was for me. It was the first time in my life I had to actually make a plan. I had to actually sit down and say, okay, I need these four skill awards, we remember skill awards, right? Mm -hmm. You guys don't know what they are, they were horrible. But I need these four skill awards and this two knots to be a tenderfoot. And then I need the rest of these skill awards to be second class, and I gotta get a merit badge. I would literally sit down with a notebook and what the engineers today call developing your critical path, I would lay out, okay, if I do this by this date, this by this date, this by this date, hit summer camp, first week and third week, I can get eight merit badges at summer camp, I literally mapped out my process to Eagle, reviewed it every month, checked where I was, reviewed it again, remapped it out when I fell behind schedule, and got to the point where I learned to make a project plan, where I learned delayed gratification, where I learned that if I didn't get this thing now, it was going to affect me in five months. That is such an important skill for our young people to learn. So the advancement program for me really laid out what made me want to run for student body president at my university when I did that. When OA section chief and lodge chief, I realized, okay, if I want to be lodge chief, I need to have this office, I need to learn these skills, 
and I've got to know all of these different people. So I learned to back my way into a position or a role or a job. And it's worked for me throughout my life. Probably the most important part of scouting for me was advancement because it taught me to make a plan and stick to a plan and adjust a plan if I need to adjust a plan. But it also gave me the confidence through all the program things that we did to know that whatever came up, I could handle. I could handle. And my troop, for instance, our first aid merit badge, you didn't earn it if you got a 99 on the test. You had to get 100. And I asked the scoutmaster that. I said, I have to get 100 on this test and I gotta require 100? And he said, well, what if that's the one you run into? He said, this isn't about getting the badge. This is about learning the skill. This is what you need to do. And what we always did, which was fascinating to me, and again, I, he had a, a good wisdom about him, is we ran our troop meetings. So once we learned a skill, after that, we taught the skill. And we didn't teach it in groups, and we didn't break up into patrols. If you were first class or above, you were one-on-one -on -one with a younger scout. And we would have that scout, they were our scout, and it was our job to get them to first class. And if we advanced, great, he didn't care. He wanted us at first class. I got the pleasure of speaking at the 100th anniversary of the Eagle Scout at the National Museum two years ago, when the 100th anniversary of the Eagle Scout. Big deal, very amazing. And I felt like it was sacrilege because I said, you know, this is an incredible event. Eagle Scout is a phenomenal achievement, but I would trade our million Eagle Scouts for 100 million first class scouts. If we could get them all to first class, then we've got that skill set in them. We've got that training in them to learn to achieve, to learn to advance, to learn that confidence that you get by accomplishing something, by tying your first bow line, or by building your first fire and actually making it work, or by winning the camporee of burn the string. You know, I always wanted to just light the match and hold it up to the string. But, and I did that once, but I didn't win. Um, so as we talk about the importance of advancement, the key to that, I think, is program making it interesting, making it relevant. On every camping trip, as I said, we camped every month, making it relevant on those camping trips, doing merit badges out in the field. We would set up giant insect collectors and we would get our insect life merit badge on our camping trip. We would get our canoeing and our rowing and our swimming and our wilderness survival. We didn't earn them in the classroom, we earned them on our weekend camping trips. That's just what we did. And it was a phenomenal opportunity for us. They were painless, and we got them done, and we learned the skill, and we got the confidence that we need. So as we look at this new advancement, we're very excited about a lot of the paths that we're taking nationally with advancement. We think a lot of these new merit badges are gonna be key to introducing young people to their careers, because that's also very, very important to us, that a young person gets to experience 136, 140, different careers or avocations or thoughts if they want to in our merit badge program. And we think that's important. But we also have got to remember that the basic message of scouting is setting a goal, working together as a team, accomplishing that goal. If we make more Eagle Scouts, that's wonderful. I will be thrilled. Um, if we don't make another one, but every Scout we have becomes a first class Scout, I will be equally as thrilled. It, it's an amazing process to watch these young people go through. I was a victim of it or a beneficiary of it, depending on your perspective. And I think it's important that we revisit this on a regular basis. So I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing today.